So for the second part of this uh, little overview, um, I would like to talk about morphing because that is actually what this is all about. Because it's spline based, we can smoothly transition one curve or one waveform into another and not just crossfade them or, or crossfade their spectrum or any of that, but really actually have smooth transitions and morph them. And to do so, I would like to start with the face distortion example that I already mentioned. So let's make one. This is like a inverted cosine, right? It's a sine wave, but in the cosine, it's a it's face shifted. Yeah, we do two of these, and in this one, in this first one, we go in and while we listen to it, we shift this point to the to the left. Like that. So this is pretty much exactly how phase distortion works. Um, you basically uh, change the phase of the curve without changing the actual curvature. So these are still two perfectly valid or perfectly uh, shaped sine or cosine elements or halves, but one is shortened, one is stretched. And now we want to go from this curve to this curve. And that's what we do in this editor. And you see that this happens automatically. And we can press this speaker icon here, and then we can actually hear it. And that's what face distortion sounds like. <laughs> And yeah, the, uh, the idea of morphing is you create two curves or several curves and you create these smooth transitions that happen automatically, which is something that in a, in a sample-based editor would be very, very tedious to do. It would be very tedious to draw like hundreds of little single frames that then smoothly transition. It's literally like pretty much impossible to do. And um, let's try a second example. Let's try something more complex, like uh, yeah, this and this. And our second curve has like uh, this, 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 this. And they still look pretty similar, right? maybe a little bit too similar, um, but you catch the drift that here, um, the, the curves find automatically find uh, their, their peaks and their valleys and align them to each other. And what you can see is that um, the morphing curves, it's, it's about the points where the points are the position of the points. So, there's uh, always a curve on top, which is the starting curve, and there's a curve at the bottom, which is the target, the morph target. And um, the curve on the top looks for the points in the curve at the bottom and assigns them. But what happens if we have more than, than uh, more points in one curve than in the other? Let's just quickly do that. So we cut this open here and there and there, and there, and here, and there. So what happens then is quite interesting because now multiple points decide, find their way to one point on the other curve, right? Because one curve has more points than the other. And it might sound nice or it might not. Right? And uh, but we still see that peaks are assigned to peaks and valleys are assigned to valleys. And that's what this transition mode does. 
peaks and valleys. So they kind of find each other automatically. But it doesn't have to be that way. There's another one which currently has a visual glitch. Or these lines shouldn't be here. Uh, that is the um, a crossfade version. And this one um, takes the two curves and they they cut each other open wherever the other curve doesn't have points. And then... That is probably the smoothest kind of transition, but it's also a little bit boring. It's just uh, it's very similar to just crossfading two waveforms. And um, yeah, but it's in there for, for good measure and because, you know, we can. And then there's another one, which is the point by point form of it. And that one is how it used to be in Zebra all the time, where each, uh, each waveform in the oscillator had to have the same number of points and they were just assigned to each other in order. So first one to first, second to second, third to third. And this is what this, this transition mode does as well. Only, obviously, at some point, uh, one curve runs out of points and then all the remaining curve points of the one curve are assigned to this one point that's left well, that was still there and this creates very uh, sunky and pwm -y kind of sounds let's have a look right, yeah. so in this version Peaks are not necessarily assigned to peaks, as you can see here, right? And here, this this peak is not assigned to a peak here. It just happens randomly to whatever uh, order of points there is. And there's a, there's a version of it that is a bit more elaborate, and that's the next one. It looks for the... Each point in the first curve looks for the closest on the on the horizontal axis to its own points. So in this one, just like that, also works nicely. And um, what we can do in this in, in this mode is we can we can have the points pretend to be somewhere else, and like if we wanted to. Like for instance, we wanted to break up this this connection here and have this point connect to that point. We can now with this tool, which is the morph vector tool, create a morph vector. And morph vector will make this point here pretend to be somewhere else, and that comes over these connections. All right, like this. Strange noise in my headphone. I hope it's not on the audio. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So then you click it again, and now it's gone. Now we're back to where it originally was. And the same works for the next mode, which is closest X and Y. So this mode looks for points. And the first curve looks for points that are not only uh, closest on uh, on the horizontal axis but also on the vertical axis and because these two curves look pretty much similar in topology they find proper points however if for instance if we flipped one of the curves let's go in here let's let's flip this curve upside down oops or add another point right so we flip it upside down, pop, right, and we go back in. And now, now they find completely different points. And what can happen in this mode is that one point can overtake another. You see that here. There's like one point gets into the way of another. And what you can do here is we can comb over again and comb over from here. And you can do crazy transitions. And that sounds like this. It's a little bit glitchy. But maybe
be exactly what you want at some point. <laughs> it's a little bit, you know, if you have a really complex curve and everything goes like into each other, it uh, can be quite dramatic. And that pretty much is almost all there is to it, except uh, there's another thing, and let's go back to the peaks and valleys because that is and let's flip this curve back again so that it looks a little bit more uh, flip my bulb. So yeah, this looks a little bit more tidy. So these are obviously two curves that are easy to, to morph into each other. But sometimes you want uh, um, a transition that you modulate or whatever that starts a little bit smoother and then becomes fast and then becomes smoother again at the end of it. And that's what you do with the ease tools. And this is like something that's that's common in video editing software, that you you have these keyframes and you ease them out or in. And you can do that here as well. And then the beginning is smooth, slow transition, and then the transition speeds up and then it becomes slow again, right? And this way you can uh, accumulate smooth transitions over many, 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 many keyframes. So because that's the other thing is we're not limited to two waveforms, right? So we can have like another one here and another one there. And let me just quickly, quickly, quickly do something that I almost forgot to mention. And that is if we had, and I had this somewhere here, and it's, here it is, right, and I had, I had something prepared. So, let's say, so, and where's this? This is there. Okay. Let's say we have a couple of waveforms. These are these are wave files of single cycle waveforms, right? And you wanted to just have something there, like this, right? So then, uh, this is obviously a sine wave, and you can import it uh, with let's say eight points. Shwoop. It doesn't really look like the same now, so we have to match it properly and it takes some time it thinks it thinks and in just ah perfect sine wave and actually perfect sine wave and um let's say we wanted another one here then uh, i use this one let's see what this is ah this Needs a few more points. Let's go to the smooth one and something like that, right? So, so you can populate your, your timeline here with uh, as many, well, currently up to 16 waveforms. And you can move them around or which other way. And you can stack them or you know whichever way and then you go back to you can cl always close the import window here swoop and then you can create all these crazy transitions and you want to ease that out so that in the beginning From here, that's like, uh, yeah, that's okay, that's boring. No, yeah, whichever, I mean, sine waves. So let's move this here and go there. No. Yeah, you can do this and ease that out and ease this in. Yeah, so you can, 
create a lot of morphing madness. Uh, and I'll be honest that not every waveform morphs smoothly into another waveform. That's just a, a fact of life and a fact of mathematics and whatever. But um, uh, I think the point of this editor is that um, you can actually create a lot of waveforms that are simple. You can use complex waveforms to can create simplified versions of these complex waveforms. And you can definitely create a lot of fun uh, with waveforms that smoothly um, interpolate or smoothly morph. And you can also do crazy things that where everything like falls apart. Let's have a look at you know what happens if I uh, if I uh, uh, morph this into that one, and I do a lot of. Uh, a lot of more vector madness here, right? So, and this is gonna be, yeah, this looks like that. So it's gonna. Yeah, so it's two waveforms in a very complex transition, and uh, <laughs> at some point when it's really complex, they all sound the same. The transitions sound the same somehow, but uh, yeah, you you know. Keep it simple is probably the best idea here. Uh, on the other hand, some people might like the really complex and really crazy transitions. And um, yeah, well, you don't have to. Oh, it's, it's quite nice. Yeah, you don't have to go crazy. Um, okay, this is, I think, what one needed to know about morphing, but I can just quickly uh, show something that people might have missed. I did a few example waveforms last year and I showed the morphing of these waveforms, you know, like... Um oh yeah, I have to... Yeah. And you can do... And yeah, last year when I when I demoed those, I didn't have audio. I think so. Now I've got audio. This is fun. This looks great with the easing. <laughs> Let's see what happens when we use like point by point. Why well, you don't want it too eased here in this instance? Yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is show how I made those waveforms, but maybe that's uh, something for another tutorial. Um, okay, so that is what something I can do in the next tutorial when I show the guides. Yes. Okay, so much for now. Up to the next one.